Now I hate short barrels on 5.56 because it's dumb. Why is it dumb? Clay Martin here with Guns America. Today we're gonna to do some science nerd shit. Talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is short barreled rifles or AR pistols or really anything in the AR family that we've chopped the barrel off of, especially if we still want to shoot 5.56 out of it. Uh, this is something that, that we've gone we've gone through many, many times in the military. I used to teach a class, every CQB class that I taught about how I hate short barrels on 5.56 because it's dumb. Why is it dumb? Well, the thing about 5.56 is 5.56 gets most of its wounding characteristics from what effectively call spalling. And this was not a design feature of the bullet, it's just a happy accident that it happened. Basically, a 2 to 3 round is a 22 caliber round, all right, but above a certain velocity, about 2,700 feet per second, all right, when it goes in, it actually breaks apart and causes this horrific wound. Uh, even the, the much maligned and hated green tip will do the same thing. It's still penetrate will go one way, and then the, uh, it'll break the cantilever, the base will go one way, and then the copper jacket and the lead will go another way. Pretty cool. But, the problem is, below that 2700 feet per second, we get less and less chance that we're going to get the spalling effect. Now, there's no guarantee that this is going to happen above 2700 feet per second at all. It's just that uh, it's more likely to happen. Below 2700 feet per second, every feet per second that we chop off of our, our velocity, we get less and less odds of that happening. The truth is, 556, if it doesn't spall, is less than spectacular as far as wounding goes. So. My solution to this is, if you're going to carry a, a, an, AR, an AR pistol or buy an SBR, why wouldn't you have it in 300 blackout? It makes a lot more sense to me. Now, like I said, in the military, we've tried this many, many times. You can look back to uh, Dr. Martin Falkler's uh, research for the Army. I believe it was the Institute of Wound Ballistics or something to that effect. Uh, he looked at CAR 15s, which is basically a 14 half inch barrel 5.56 five, 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 gun from, uh, from Vietnam. All, right. All the way up through uh, Mogadishu, you can read Paul Howe's personal account of how the 10-inch barrels that those guys had weren't doing shit to the uh, Somalis, but his M14 was getting the job done. All the way up until the president, the GWAT, I still remember when 10-inch barrels got issued to regular ODAs, and that was like the worst day of my life, because everybody wanted to shoot them because they look cool. Anyway, neither here nor there. We're going to go to the range today, and I'm going to show you, uh, using a chronograph, exactly why we don't want to run a short barrel rifle in 5.56 caliber. So, to that end, I have two different pistol uppers, both from primary weapon systems, both 10 inch barrels, one's at 5.56, one's at 300 blackout. As a control, I also have two Barnes Precision uppers in 300 blackout and 5.56, same manufacturer, same barrel length. Our ammo sponsor today is American Eagle. So, we're going to be shooting uh, 55 grain, 223 and 150 grain, 300 blackout. And if I can stop dropping our products a little long. While we're out there, we're gonna look at something called free bore boost. It's a commonly held myth that suppressors slow your bullets down. They don't. A, a suppressor actually acts a little bit like a barrel extension. You get what's called free bore boost. It's called free bore because the bullet's not engaged in lands and grooves anymore. And because it's in a baffle stack instead of an actual barrel, you still get some pressure bleed, but this will act to a certain extent like a uh, like a barrel extension, so we're gonna we're gonna check this out in both calibers as well. We've got the Gemtech Patrolman in 5.56, which is a thread-on suppressor, and the GMT 300 Black from Gemtech, which is also a thread-on suppressor. All right, let's do this. Let's go to the range. All right, here's how we've got our chrono station set up. Uh, first off, I'm on a blue tarp, so I don't get my tackle pants dirty. I got all my equipment laid out. Got my firing position five feet back from my packed chrono. All right, I've got a target set up downrange. The target, the target is there so that I'm always getting the same flight path of my bullets through the chronograph. So that's important. It's not like I'm worried about the groups or anything. I'm just basically worried about getting that same flight path every time. So, all right, I'm all set up. I'm five feet back from the chrono. On target, chronograph's ready to go. And there we have it. Now, I'm not gonna ask you guys to watch me shoot through a chronograph because that's about as exciting as watching grass grow or paint dry. Also, here at the Martin household, we absolutely believe in the ATF's rulings. We would never, ever, ever put a stick brace on our shoulder to shoot on film. Like the founding father's intent. All right, so let's get back at the house. 
All right, so what do we find out of the range today? Well, fortunately, I've made this handy chart. Forgive me, we're uh, all out of dry erase boards around here. All right, starting over with a 300 blackout. Out of a 16-inch barrel, we got about 2,062 feet per second average. Out of our 10-inch barrel, we got about 1,874. So that's a drop of, a, you know, right at 200 feet per second. And when we went back to our 10-inch and we put a suppressor on, we went up to 1,905. So our freeboard boost was there. We got about 31 feet per second back. Now our 5.56 gun, on the other hand, whew, yikes. At our 16-inch, we started at about 2850. When we went down to the 10-inch barrel, all right, we dropped down to 475. So that's almost 400 feet per second cut off instantly. And we went when we went to our 10-inch barrel with the suppressor, <coughs> we went back up to about 2515. So we got back about 40 feet per second. All right, but not nearly like a real barrel. All right, so what does it mean for us? Now I've shot people with 10-inch barrels and 14 and a half inch barrels, and I found it less than spectacular. Uh, at the same time that I was running around with an SR-25, one of my sister sniper teams liked uh, what was called an SPR, stands for Social Purpose Rifle, especially an accurized 20-inch 5.56 gun, and uh, they never had problem one. All right? Most people they shot were one-shot kills, just like we would have with our 7.62 guns. Basically, <clears throat> here's how it works with bullets. There's no such thing as really math or any bullshit like that that can that this holds 100% true, but this is this tends to be relatively true. All right, if we draw a standard. X, Y matrix, all right. Over here in the super positive, all right, we have things that are heavy and fast, like 50 BMG, or 338 Lapua. All right, these are things that work every time. In fact, we can probably pretty much say that 50 BMG is the gold standard for killing people. All right, and then we move down here, still on our heavy side, we move down to our slow side, like 45 ACP. I would honestly even say 762 by 39. And probably our 300 blackout. All right, they're slow, but they're still big. So I get the job done. All right, over here in our light but fast, uh, we could have like 243, uh, 556, 22250. All right, these are gonna be your light projectiles that are still hauling ass though. All right, and that tends to get the job done too. I don't know too many people walked off any of those out of a long, long barrel. Right. Well, one of the things that are a bad idea is down here in the slow and light, like 380 or 4.6 H and K. What that silly little PDW machine gunny thing is that they have? It looks like a very bad idea. Anyway, my point is. You gotta have one or the other. You gotta have mass or you gotta have velocity if you're gonna get some killing done. Now, I'm not saying the 300 blackout is the cat's pajamas or anything. You know, jury's still out on that. Uh, not a lot of people have been, people have been shot with it so far because I haven't really caught on with the military or the police. All right, but I think that, that day will happen. But all the things being equal, all right, if I'm gonna be within 400 feet per second anyway, I'll definitely take the bullet that's twice as heavy.